Today we're going to have a look at doing the heated bed connections for your 3D printer. So again, this is for the 4 and 1.8, but it also applies for the 2.42. So you'll have your slab. Now mine's a little bit too thick. This is 12.7 mil. Um, typical thicknesses are 6 to 8 mil, so probably about there. Um, that has given me more um, hole on there to drill through to tap in. Because the goal is that we're going to put this part here on and this part will go into this and then the other uh, part that I've cut off will go on there. So the idea is that the thermal fuse, if it reaches a too high of a temperature, this one's 115, it will cut off and you'll need to solder on a new one there. And that's because the SSR that this will connect to, if it does fail, it would typically fail in the on state, so the software wouldn't be able to power it off. So what I'm going to try before I do all this is there's another kind of connection on here. So there's a few different ways to connect it up, and I've been a bit worried about sort of cutting this at such a small bit without being confident that my connection is going to be strong enough. So I've got a bit of a part here. This is a solder splice connector. So what you do is that you put your thermal connection bed here, this is a sample wire, and put that in. So let's give that a go. So I'll um, open that up a bit. Put that in. This will be interesting to see if it works or not. Because what I'll do after this, because this is a sacrificial one, is um, cut it apart and see how well did the solder flow onto um, this part here. So I'll open it up a bit better. There we go. That's in now. Yep. That is in. Now I'll twist it a bit. Twisty, twisty. Okay. No, that's crap. Alright, I'll do that. <coughs> so again, um, if this method is reasonably poor, what I'm going to do instead is just a typical um solder connection and what I'm going to do is put some heat shrink over the top of it to um, give it a bit of strength. Probably what I'll do after that is I'll have a bit of um, uh, another larger heat shrink to go over the top of it to give it a bit of um, strength. Okay, opened up. Put it on. Almost a crimp would uh, do this better. So technically if, you're, if you have the requisite parts for it a um, crimp connection would be stronger, FYI. So these pins are, that's in place. Okay, so what happens now is that we put this on, like this. So see that, that silver bit there in the middle? That's actually um, a little bit of solder that will melt on, pretty much on demand. So, see that's pressed in. That's in place now. <clears throat> so let's try it with the heat gun, see how it goes. So we want to start a little bit, see how it goes. Now I did say you do need a fair bit of heat. The little green, uh, red bit, or the bit on the outside of this, I don't know if you can hear me properly, but the outside part is actually pretty much just glue. This makes it like a um, waterproof ceiling as well, which is nice. Alright, so let's see where we go with here. Twist it around a bunch. Wait and see what happens. Oh, so you can see that's shrinking now. Move it for a little bit. It's getting there. Okay, that's doing the thing. That's definitely heating up enough now. Alright, so. I don't think that's going to melt anymore, to be honest. Let's switch this off for a sec, have a feel of it. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's probably not. I don't know if that's melting enough. I'll put it on for another moment. You can see here, like that's a 
that's that's a decently strong connection. Like that's not moving on um, this side. Just good. All right, we'll give it another quick go. Okay. You can see that melt, can't you? Okay. Yeah, that's definitely melting through. Alright, so now I can see that the solder has flowed through onto those connections, which is, that's not bad. Alright, so, and bending wise, that's that's pretty good too. I'll, um, I'll heat up this bit. So you can see because this wire is thinner, it doesn't have a strong of a connection. But it's, it's still plenty fine enough. There we go. Wow, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That's that's melted all the way down. That's very good. Wow, I like that. That's that's a good connection. Um, so again, like if I was happy with all this, what I would then do is um, I could go over it again with another layer of heat shrink if I wanted, like that. So let's cut this open and see how well this melted through. So I'll pause this for a moment. All right, so. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this here. I'll, um, I'll put it up close and then I'll um, attach a picture as well to give a better idea of what's going on. But that's pretty good. I mean, the, the solder has flowed all the way through. Um, well, most of the way through, sorry. So um, I'll cut back the cable on this one. But um, on the small cable, that's definitely all the way through. That's, that's a solid connection there. I'll cut back this sheaf. On this. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, I watched a YouTube video and it, it, it basically it coated the outside and that was it. Okay, let's have a look. Um, hmm, can I bend the wires out? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I can. All right. The solder's clearly flowed back a little bit too. Yeah, okay. So you can see there, like, it's, it hasn't melted all the way through. It's, it's pretty much just on the outside. But the outside is, wow, that's good. All right. And you can see there the wires are not soldered on too. Okay. Well, that's pretty much confirms me that it's it's pretty good, and in a pinch they're they're nice, but um I don't think I'd feel safe about that melting all the way through on the um the hot end thing. So I'm going to go with the conventional way of a soldering iron instead. So as I said before, these things are pretty useless. Well, not I wouldn't say useless, but just not suited for a hot end bed connection. So we're going to instead be doing it uh, the old traditional way which is we're going to put a thermistor, uh, sorry, a thermal fuse here. Now, so wire routing wise, the polarity on this doesn't matter at this point. What I mean by that is that um, our power is going to go through here and one of them, this one here, for convenience sake, is going to go up across here and I'm going to trim this wire and then solder those two connections together. After that, I'm going to um, heat shrink it on, probably put two lengths of heat shrink, just to be safe. And then eventually, so that bit will go on here, like this. And then, once this has been cut off, so this wire, will be soldered onto this part. If you're wondering what that whole layer is for, that's for a, um, if you've got ground, or you do, you'll um, also want to run a wire to ground to the heated bed plate, so you don't sort of electrocute yourself. So the scary part of this is always cutting this wire here. So I'm going to cut this now. Live on the camera, to scare me. But um, yeah. So this bit will attach. And we'll shorten this. Like that. Because we don't need much of the end on here. So cut. And now we need to trim the wire off this. Now I have tried to use the auto wire crimpers on this and they don't work because this this covering is too strong 
So I'm going to look to see if I can trim that off in any other way, otherwise I'm going to be really risky and um, cut a little bit off that using the, um, this part. So that mainly just means me being cutting very loosely on that and then using my finger to push it up because I don't want to go anywhere near the wires. Alright, so I'll stop this and do it. Uh, the cable that's been um, cut. So again, I was very careful on that and I made sure that when I pushed off that there's still um, plastic remaining on there. So um, I'm fairly confident, although that's not the best way to do it, that um, that will do the job. So you can see here this rating is 18 gauge wire, 200C. That's um, good to know. So now I have this here, I'm going to remind myself that the outer wire here is going to go on like this. So I'm going to cut um, two lengths of heat shrink wire. So I'm going to put that on and I'm going to give it heaps and heaps of slack. So let's measure off a bunch that we want to put on. And from here. So if I do it that way I've got enough to put that back on again. Yep. A little bit of slack. Now again um, because this is to the back of your printer if you're doing your 1.8 You've actually got a fair bit of room on the back and also if you really want it you actually have a fair bit of room at the bottom too because there's a 20 mil extrusion um, holding this whole plate up okay so I reckon probably about that is way overkill but plenty enough for it so let's do that and do another little bit that we can put around oops the actual heat shrunk part. So what I mean by that is, oh, I better cut this bit first. So I'm going to put two pieces on and I'll heat shrink this bit first, enough for it to shrink down, and then I'll shrink this bit over it for double strength. Um, some people use um, braided cables and stuff. I better check it to see if that's actually appropriate to use on a bed that's hot. Um, if it's not, then you would end your braiding stuff early. Okay, so we've got this short. Let's give this a little bit of slack. So figure out where we're going to cut it. There. Okay. Plenty of slack there. I'm going to cut this now. The big moment of truth, right? So if you're interested in what the other connection is, which is probably the, the most reliable method to do this kind of thing. That's called a butt splice connector. So it's, it's basically a metal tube that you'll crimp these things with and that's probably the best way to do this whole thing. Anyway, so I'll peel this sheaf away so I get a bit of wire and come back. Okay, so the sheaf, protective sheaf has been cut away. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flux pen um, both of these things and do the actual soldering. A little bit exciting. So flux pin here, flux pin on this. Now I'm going to insert the solder, the other cable into this one because I want a really neat connection, not a side by side kind of thing. And I want to melt the wire all the way through. So to hold this in place, oh the other thing I've done too is put the heat shrink on preemptively for this part. Is I'm going to put this on, hold it in place. Now I'm going to, actually I'll do that second. Let's put this in. Pull it away a bit. All oh, the sheaf, not the sheaf, the actual wires. Oh. And then push it back together again in a moment. Okay. That's done. Awesome. So we are going to flow a crap ton of solder over this in a moment to actually make this connection be more permanent. I'm trying to push that back in again. we 
go. So until that solder's on, like that's not very strong. That's okay. I'm going to have to push that in once it's attached on here. So remember, soldering on safety, make sure it's not on. And don't do what I just did, which was touch the tip, even when you think it's not on. Because it only takes a um, push event for that to um, happen. Right, so that's, that's held in place enough. Push this back in. Okay. That is in. Hold this. Now, if you've got a third arm, this makes this so much easier. Because then, if you've got it held in place by hand, then getting the rest of it to do the thing should be pretty easy. So, there's that. Now, hold that in a bit better. So, we're about to do soldering. To be honest, it's probably not the best idea I'm soldering with it over the top of the heat bed. So let's fix that up. Let's um, intentionally move this off a bit. Um, I could use captain tape, but okay. So turn this on again. This is the TS100. It's a pretty good soldering iron. Um, I've got a normal one, um, but it's a lot more tricky to move around. So I will get that ready. Tin that a bit. Okay, that's good to go. So I'm going to put this um, iron under the bed and then flow through the um, stuff. Right, moment of truth, eh? So the theory is that the heat on the rest of the wire should be hot enough for the rest of your arm iron to melt it across. So I'm waiting for that to happen. In fact, that's fused on soldering iron itself I think here so I'll have to pull that across this is especially thick wiring here by looks Ooh, now what's happening is that switched off it's not me it's you basically right. okay that's melting through Do this side as well. Now, the, um, this soldering on switching off, I just, my gut feeling is because the power supply is pretty shitty and what, not wired that great. So if that's you, happening to you too, you're not the only one. So I'm waiting for this to go away. Thank you. Press this to switch on. Just remember my setting. Thank you. Again, I really want a coated tin connection here. I watched another video when they were bench testing the, the splice connections and they used the word smooshed. So I'm going to say that that's what I'm doing here too. I'm smooshing some soldering onto the thing. So I'm fairly confident that flows through in spite of my um, really awkward connection here. Okay, one last check here. There is a big blob on the bottom we have to wipe off. Okay. 
gives that a moment, see how much, uh, so i done this upside down, this was the wrong way to do it, just FYI. Solder cools down pretty quickly, so I'll give that a moment. So the important part when you're doing these kind of things is that you have to keep it straight, or level, like not move it while it's in the cooling down phase, otherwise you'll get like crystalline fractures that you won't see. That's a very good connection. Um, let's do this a bit better. Because again, this should have been done upside down. Oof. Don't forget that if you're holding a wire, the heat will transfer through it. So I was saying foof then because, yeah, that was getting reasonably hot. <laughs> Alright, I'll do another bit here. The reason I'm being uh, fairly careful that I don't want blobs on this is because um, I'm going to be putting some heat shrink on top of it and I don't want any sort of sharp bits on top of it there. Okay. That's melted through. Just a little bit more solder. Okay, so I'll use um, some tin snips too get rid of the sharp bits on that. So I'll take pause this, get that cleaned up. Okay, so that wire's been cleaned up and is good to go. So again, I'm going to put a bit of tubing on there, heat that up. So I'm going to use the um, air gun now. So by heating this part up, give that a little bit of wiggle room, that'll um, shrink this wire. So let's do that. Doing its job. So the important part is not so much you don't need to shrink this too much. The only real goal here is that you've got a connection that is pretty strong. So if, if you have it too tight there, you run a risk of like, is something wrong with your solder? And that's why I have two lengths of, um, of heat shrink. So make sure the end is pretty melted down. Great. So that's not going to budge. So I'm happy with that. So then, now it comes on the other piece. A little bit more resistance there, which is expected. Gonna wait for that to cool just a few more seconds. So yeah, that's not moving up or down in any way. If you have too much heat shrink, then it won't bend. And you do want a little bit of bend there. Push this up, across, see that's going up now. You can do it. So I barely need to actually heat shrink this bit. Come on. That's over enough. I'm happy with that. So I'll, I'll barely, again, I'll barely heat shrink this because it doesn't need it. And then on the other side. Perfect. You now have a good connection to your bed. Oh, geez, I better turn that off. I nearly touched that. Yeah. So, 
Now I would um, tap a thread into this part here, this part, and then the next bit is I will, see that's, um, that's pretty good, I like that. So if the wire I've snipped off here, we'll get soldered on in a similar way to this part. In fact, I might as well do that now. Okay, so I'll pause this and I'll prepare those pieces. Okay, so this part's done. We just uh, covered that in a moment ago. That's great. We've got um, some heat shrink on here, which honestly isn't as tricky to do because we've got this whole wire that we can run stuff onto. So we're up to doing this. So I'm going to flux pen the thing. Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to open the wire up and I'll put a bit more flux in there. Normally what I do is I have wires side by side when I'm soldering a connection. Although I feel that for the importance of this one I've been um, trying to jam it into this and then twisting it around. I'm not actually sure if that's the best way to do that. So fluxed again. I honestly could probably tin this. In fact, I might a little bit. Especially if this is sitting inside. Okay. That's reasonably tinned up. Let's get rid of the blob. a nice connection so the idea here is that when I flow solder through the other connection it is going to flow onto this one that gets pretty hot okay so we are going to use a helping hand again now because the position of this isn't as important I'm going to be able to hold it with this part again like these things are, are gold like if, you, if you're building this and you don't have one I recommend you go and grab one this one here is from Hobby Creek with the four arms um, helps you get through if you've got a bunch of wires to do it once you can hold them in together or you can use multiple arms to make it a really strong connection so I feel this one will go on a lot easier because I'm holding it in a way where the solder is going to flow easier due to the gravity off it. Twist it a bit. Double check our soldering. This one. Okay. We are good to go. What I should do here, see how, that, how easily that fell off, is use this to position it in place. We want this to really sit on, and the stronger that sit is, the better. Oops. So I can see probably the weakness with this thing I'm doing here is that unless I press these wires back onto it pretty tightly, it's not going to be a strong connection. So I'm going to hold that on, use my third arm. It's holding it in place now. So now I've got two hands to flow solder through and all kinds of stuff. So that makes it again much, much easier. Okay. See? Now it's time to do the soldering thing. So again, tin your soldering iron. This thing is pretty invaluable because it, it holds, like, it's not going to let it fold back. Again, tin that. Mm. Jerry's still out there whether this is a good idea or not. I mean, yes, that is flowing through.
to the old tradition of smooshing in the solder. It's very clearly getting on it now. Excellent. Take off a little bit of liquid. Check the back. The back needs a bit of work. Get the smooshing. I wish I was more professional for this stuff, but I'm not. I'm still very much learning it all. Soldering iron switched off. Okay. There we go, it's melted all the way through. Excellent. That's perfect. All right, so now I'm going to wipe away the excess. Now, because this is held together pretty firmly, that makes this phase a lot easier too. When you're wiping it away, it's a good chance to make sure that the connections are still very strong. And I think they are here. I've definitely erred on the side of too much solder. So again, these connections, once they're on, shouldn't be moving. But because it's an AC connection, I do want to take special care with them. Okay, so let's feel how that is. It's um, barely hot now, so I can lift that up. How does it look? It's a very good connection. I feel that's melted all the way through. So I'll give that another few seconds. Use a hot air gun and that is how you mount your thermal fuse to the bed. That's the goal of that. Another thing I'll touch later on is with your 5 volt mean well supply the spades that are in the bomb are actually too big. The 5mm ones, which are too big, I don't have them here. Um, what you need is 3.7mm. That will let you push that in like that. So you'd be going obviously into the line and neutral for that. So, something to be aware of. You can put a wire in there, but I don't really feel safe with that. Yeah, so it's a tiny little thing. RS255. Okay, so, heat shrink tubing time, so I'll just double check, do I have any sharp bits on this? No, I don't. Oh, there's one tiny bit. Okay. So if you do have a, shine, a sharp bit, um, if it's sharp enough, it'll be cut offable by this, and then you'll be fine. Cool, eh? So just check, that's not going to fall out very easily. Push this bit on. So again, being mindful of how this bit is actually getting attached, I probably want more strength, oh, probably about even. So when it's on the bed, and gravity will be pushing it down a little bit, give it a little bit of leeway there, so there's no sort of flexing that can be happening. So, heat shrink time. Let's do that. being mindful of not melting the plastic behind this in the video too. There we go. Is that going okay? It's a nice smooth connection. Yep. Double checking, I'll do the edges. That's not going anywhere in a hurry. Good. So with that on, 
we'll do our last piece of heat shrink, which is here, hopefully. Yep. Again, this is dubby double safety thing. Um, I've seen some. I haven't seen some people do this, but maybe it's a suggestion. Put some captain tape on there for a bit of temperature resistance. But yeah, I don't know. All right, so this bit goes on. Again, it'll be a bit of a push. Might heat shrink that up just a tiny bit. There. There we go. Much easier. All right. So again, I'll, it'll be a bit of a tight fit, especially if you're using the same heat shrink wire. But that's kind of the goal. You want it to be a tight fit, and it's just double. Thermal, uh, double padding over it. There we go. We're done. Do that there. And it's more important to heal topics and the actual connection itself. There we go. And we're done. Nifty, eh? So, we're all done here. Um, what I would do now is I'd use a 2.5mm threaded tap to tap on this. Um, I'm not sure if I'll add that in this video. But um, now, you have a connection that's ready to go. In terms of um, routing this through, you'll have these two wires and this one in a bundle going back to your um, appropriate bit. So this would be going to the bottom of your printer if it's a 1.8 because the um, high voltage stuff is down there and the thermistor for the bed would be probably going to your SKR at the rear. Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoy. So.